Salut, Salut YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we are in Saint Germain en Laye and we are going to be discovering the, the famous chateau. On y va. On y va. So we're just walking around the city, the, the town, not city. And um, one thing, we really like it here. Yeah, this is my second time, but it was three years ago. And okay, yeah, he keeps on saying, oh yeah, you haven't <laughs> been here. Yeah. Yes, I haven't been here. I've been only uh, outside the chateau, that's it. I came and I left. But it's really nice here. Lots of like closed streets to it's, cars. Yeah, so many stores, so many boulangerie, A lot. I've tried two already. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah. looking for something else as well, I don't know. I, whatever I see, I will buy it. I just wanna, I just, I feel so hungry today, I don't know why. I just feel hungry, so I'm just walking around and I'm seeing things and whatever I like, I just buy it and I eat it. So behind me used to be a, a garden that was built during the time of uh, Henry IV. And at that time, this was before, of course, before uh, Le Nôtre. So it was before the famous French garden and the garden was built Italian style and uh, there were fountains, there were beautiful um, kind of like levels going down with, the, with, the, with the staircases that were actually a bit low and wide so the horses could go on them. And why horses? Because the king used to arrive by the river, by the Seine and whenever he came out he would get on the horse because he's not gonna go all this distance by foot, he's a king, he can't do that. So he would get on the horse and go up here and um, behind me on the side is the pavilion of André IV. So it's a pavilion that remains from the chateau, which was the new chateau. Uh, that was built also during the Henry IV and this is where Louis XIV was born. The new chateau was destroyed during the revolution and um, before that it was this magnificent Italian style chateau. Thankfully they kept the old chateau, otherwise we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't see it. But the view here is fantastic, you can see all of de la Défense, you can see Paris, you can see all of this because we are on the hill. Apparently, the fountains that you see in the gardens, like in Versailles and even here and stuff, um, back in the day when the king was there, there was a person always who would run and turn on the fountains when the king, ar king arrived and when the king left, they would switch them off. <laughs> So there was always someone on standby waiting for the king to show, show up and whenever he showed up, the fountains would be switched on. Voila! Chateau de Saint-Germain-en-Laye, it used to be one of the main residences of French kings and then Louis XIV moved to Versailles. So you only have two options at the moment. You either visit the archaeological museum on your own and you can have a look at the exhibitions and collections or prehistoric era or you can choose to go up to the roof with the tourist guide that's what we chose to do and I really enjoyed it and throughout the visit you learn about the history of that beautiful chateau it took us 10-15 minutes to go up to the roof and then you have an amazing view of Saint Germain en Laye so the chateau started its history, it was constructed in the beginning, there was a building in the 12th century that was a residence and um, it was pretty much adored by Louis IX, who was the Saint Louis, Saint Louis. He is the one who acquired the uh, relic of the, of the crown of thorn of Christ and um, he increased the size of the chateau and he added the Saint Chapelle. Why did he add the Saint Chapelle here? is because, well first of all it's a chateau, it needs a chapel and uh, the second thing is he needed to keep this relic somewhere the, the Parisian Saint Chapel is, wasn't ready yet the chapel here was ready 10 years in advance so the things were kept here with Louis IX now Francois I, he's the one whose initials you can see all over the place in the chateau there is the F everywhere uh, you can see it on our external walls, you can see it inside, you can see it even by the door the door keyholes, you can see the F with the crown, that's referring to him. And um, he's the one who changed the design of the chateau in a way that he changed, the, he swapped 
between the white stone and the bricks that's why the chateau looks very different it looks more red um, the accentuating points of the chateau uh, normally they would be done in the white stone the local white stone but they were done in the brick and the funny thing happened was apparently while it was being constructed he changed his mind and um, the lower floors had already been finished in the stone so they just painted over them to make it look like it was a brick because the upper floors later on they had the brick themselves so Henry II started the work on the new chateau which was further down from the old one and uh, it had this incredible Italian garden that laid all the way down to the Seine and Henry IV obviously he completed that mission by completing the chateau Louis XIV lived here uh, from his early childhood until he moved to Versailles much later on uh, he absolutely loved the chateau why because um, this is the place where he escaped to from the uprising that happened uh, in his childhood and basically he found security and he was saved here in this chateau that's why he absolutely loved the chateau but under him he felt like it wasn't big enough so he wanted to expand it he added um, different pavilions at the corners of the chateau and uh, but then they were destroyed later on because they were very ugly and some of them were not even finished apparently and then he moved to Versailles and everybody got upset the locals got upset how come they lost their king the king moved somewhere else but yeah he preferred Versailles in the end that's the reality of it if you are into architecture you should come here because the architecture looks like the chateau you would have this chateau in northern France not in the France region because in northern France everything is um, built with the red brick not with the white one and it's really different actually so yeah so when you are when you are here in the garden uh, first of all the garden is free you don't have to pay yeah um, the chateau itself you have to pay if you visit by yourself the museum I think it's six euro yeah Per person and if you do the the, with the visit guide. with the guide yeah. it's 11 euro per person and you should do it online in advance there were 10 people today and then there was a couple who came and they were not accepted because it was more than allowed yeah, <laughs> yeah it was 12 and then basically they didn't let them stay with us because it's, it's the roof yeah so basically there is a limit of 10 people I think on uh, on to go onto the roof on the roof it is quite tight so you kind of kind of have to like go and uh, there's barely any space in between it's very secure it's just uh, they're not taking too many people yeah. for security reasons obviously and uh, it's highly recommended like we highly recommend you this thing it's really cool and the guide obviously it's in French but I think maybe they have some English I don't know actually I have no idea I'm sure she speaks English because she works in Lou Versailles uh, Saint Germain en Laye and she mentioned one as well, but I forgot Clooney. the fourth one and Clooney as well. Yeah, I'm sure she speaks English, but I think uh, you need to book online. Maybe they have an English version. Yeah, I'm not sure. They probably do. Yeah, mostly. And as I said, we are in the domain in the garden. The garden is there, there, and on this side, you've got more of like a tree kind of based garden rather than a strict. French garden with lines and perspectives and stuff. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you like this episode as much as we do. If you would like to see more of these videos, please don't forget to like, share and comment below. And if you would like, you can subscribe as well. Until our next journey, our